The general consensus of 32 plus is sort of right, although this experiment rendered some rather interesting results. Welcome to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Verse. First, as always, let's cover our methodology. Feel free to skip to the next chapter if you're not bothered by this. To ensure consistency, all system settings, including CPU, GPU, and memory timings, are kept consistent between tests. Now, as I have a 2x32GB memory kit, this does limit my ability to physically switch memory configurations for testing without buying more RAM. And quite frankly, there are better uses for that money. Like beer. For this reason, any memory reduction is done by artificially limiting the amount of memory that Windows can see in msconfig. I did test this at 32GB with both the OS limit as well as physically removing a DIM, and the difference was less than 1%, well within margin of error. For that reason, I'm confident enough in these results, hence posting the video. All graphics options are set to high, with upscaling disabled, and any AMD Adrenaline functionality such as FrameGen is also disabled. For this, I ran two different loops, one going from the hubs in Area 18, down to my hangar and back again at night, with the second loop taking us from Aspire Grand in New Babbage to Wally's Bar and back during the day. You may be wondering, why two loops instead of one? I found that whilst New Babbage generally performs better than Area 18 in terms of frame rate, it's also more memory hungry, pushing to around 19.5GB of RAM, whereas Area 18 only pushed to about 165 as I have 64GB, this doesn't affect me in any way, but this does have an impact on our results, which I will cover at the point of relevance. It's not just because I've spent a week running in circles in Area 18 and needed a change of scenery, okay? The reason for these loops is that both offer a good range of draw distances, as well as heavy GPU and CPU areas, and the ability to do a consistently repeatable run. Benchmarking is done using MSI Afterburner's built-in instance of Reva Tuna, and no other software was running whilst benchmarking is running. Now then, on to the results. Testing was done with 5 memory capacities, 16, 24, 32, 48 and 64, as these are the most commonly available from various manufacturers. First let's have a look at average frame rates using 64GB as our baseline. Expanding this out to 48 and we see absolutely zero change outside of margin of error. This is to be expected. Star Citizen is using 19.5GB of memory, regardless of resolution, with the total system utilisation sitting at 28. No surprise then that at 32 we see the same thing. What is surprising is that at 24, where we drop below the 28GB system wide requirement, the results are again within margin of error to our baseline. And at 16, we see the same again. This was true in both New Babbage and Area 18. So what about our 1% lows? First, looking at Hoth but at home, going from 64 down to 32 is no discernible change. As we drop to 24, we do start to see the impact of going below the amount of memory the system needs, though at 4K the impact could be considered margin of error. As we drop to 16, we really see the impact of that low system memory has, with a 25-30% to drop across the board. As for the less RAM-heavy Cyberpunk Coruscant, even dropping to 24GB sees no difference in our frame rates. This is interesting, as the total system memory utilisation in this loop is about 26GB, two more than we had available. How about our 0.1%? As is par for the course, we see no drop going all the way down to 32GB in both loops. In Tamu Winter Wonderland, 4K does appear to show a drop here, but when dealing with values this low, minor fluctuations are exacerbated. As such, I'm cautiously putting that down to Star Citizen being, well, Star Citizen, down to 24 gig, and we see a sharp drop, and at 16, our 0.1% values hit rock bottom. This was the point where hitches became momentary freezes, and whilst this is entirely anecdotal, it felt like the jank got real down there. As for Blade Runner from Wish, whilst we do see a drop at 24 gig, it's not as harsh, though at 16, things once again get bad. Again, anecdotal, but I swear the trams were so much worse. Also, little fun fact, at 16GB the game just straight up crashes whenever you try to exit. Like, every single time. So, what's my takeaway from this? The common statement that SC is RAM hungry is pretty accurate. For context, Monster Hunter Wilds, which is a notoriously badly optimised PC game, uses half of what SC does. 
But as for the occasional claim that more than 32 gig will improve performance, that took four takes to say right. This is, for the most part, simply not true. As the tests show, there is no variance between 64 and 32, as it leaves you with 4 to 5 gig of overhead, which is not insignificant. And as we see in the Area 18 tests, even going over this, so long as it's by no more than a few gig, is not going to have a noticeable impact. Assuming, of course, you can get over 32 gig. For context, I need to have Discord, Steam, Spotify, Signal RGB, Chrome with about 10 tabs, and YouTube playing a 4K video all on my second screen to do so. Really, it comes down to you. For the vast majority of people, 32 gig is more than enough, even with the unoptimized buggy mess that we all, for some strange reason, seem to enjoy. If, like me, you hoard Chrome tabs like a dragon does gold, then 48 is the answer. 64 is really not needed unless you do any sort of high memory productivity. Leave any thoughts below, and make sure you check out the other videos in this mini-series. And with that, I thank you all for watching. I think it's time for a beer.